Capacitors are really useful in all sorts of electrical devices like camera flashes and defibrillators, but we've already made a film about that which you can watch here. A-level physics students should investigate the properties and behaviour of capacitors through practical work, and that provides an opportunity to get them using data loggers and ICT and thinking about how those techniques can improve data collection and analysis. And that's what I'm doing here. I've got a capacitor in series with a 10K resistor. I've picked those values because they give a time constant of 47 seconds. I've connected that to a voltage sensor, which is connected to a data logger. And I've connected the capacitor to a power supply, which I'll disconnect from so that the capacitor can discharge through the resistor. I've set up the data logger so that it collects data for two minutes. So that's about two and a half of the time constant. It's going to record voltage once every second, which is humanly impossible. I could have set it to collect up to 20 times a second, but that's not necessary. And the other marvellous thing about this particular software is that it will do a live plot of the voltage as it changes with time. I'm simply going to disconnect from the power supply rather than using a switch or anything to ensure that it's discharging through the resistor and nothing else. So let's have a look at what happens. You can see that the data is being plotted on the screen behind me and students should be able to recognise that this is an exponential decay curve. Once it's finished plotting, they should be able to check for its exponential behaviour by seeing if there's a constant half-life. They could also look at the graph and try to find out how long it takes for the voltage to drop to 1 over E of its original value and compare that to RC. However, since this is an activity that you'd probably do in the second year of A-level, we'd expect students to do a slightly more sophisticated data analysis. Let me show you what I mean. So the voltage varies with time according to the equation V equals V0 E to the minus T over RC. If we take natural logarithms of both sides, we get ln V equals ln V0 minus T over RC. And this is a straight line equation, which means that if I plot ln v against t, I get a straight line with a negative gradient. And in fact, the gradient is equal to minus 1 over rc. So the great thing about using a data log is that I can take the data collected and export it into a spreadsheet and get the spreadsheet to do all this processing for me, which is what I've done. So here, you can see a spreadsheet. I've got the original data. And then I've added a column where I've got the spreadsheet to calculate ln v for me and plot the graph. It's even provided me with the gradient, which is 0.0202. One over that gradient is 49, which is just slightly off my value of RC of 47. Now, even if you don't have a class set of data loggers, it's still possible to use this practical to get students using ICT. So, Carol, you're doing the low budget version of this practical. Yes, I am. I've got exactly the same circuit that you had. I've got resistor and an electrolytic capacitor. I've made sure I've connected it in the right polarity so that it doesn't go bang. So instead of the data logger sensors, I've got a multimeter acting as a voltmeter yeah. and I've got a stop clock. All I have to do is disconnect the power supply, start my stop clock and take measurements every 10 seconds. It doesn't matter when I start the stop clock because this is an exponential decay, so I'll still yeah. see that. So let's have a go. And then when it gets to 10 seconds, I'll take a reading. I find it's easier if you count in your head as it goes down. Okay. It's changing quite quickly, and I'm guessing you're trying to read two devices at the same time. There's going to be quite a lot of uncertainty. Yes, there is. Of course, students could work in pairs, and one could look after the stopwatch, and one could look after the voltmeter, and that would make it a little bit less uncertain. Or you could video the voltmeter and the stop clock, and then play back the video and pause it at every 10 seconds and then that way you could take readings and actually you could take more readings that way because you could pause it more often. Okay, that's a really good idea. And have you got any other suggestions? This is a second year practical so I think we can ask students to do a little bit more and I'd give them an unknown capacitor and challenge them to tell me the capacitance. That's really useful because they'd have to choose their own resistor and that means that they're thinking about what the time constant is They'll have to do a couple of runs to test it out. And that's really good experimental practice to do that. It also will introduce them to uncertainty caused by manufacturing tolerances. As you know, resistors are given plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 10%, yeah. depending on the banding. 
and that might be the first time students have come across that idea, so that will help them give me the uncertainty in their capacitance as well. I can see that you still collect quite a lot of data, so would you still use a spreadsheet to get them to process it? Absolutely. Processing this by hand would take quite a long time. You have to input the data, but that's not a problem. I think it's really important that students experience using ICT to support their practical work, and this is a good way to do it, even if you haven't got a class set of data loggers. I hope you found that useful. In the description below you'll find links to lots of other useful stuff like teacher's notes and worksheets and please don't forget to subscribe so you can watch the other films in the series. Okay, this doesn't feel weird at all.